K-I-L-R Killer Game Simmers and pilots, I am the killer gamer. And there goes an airplane right there. <laughs> Welcome to the world tour. Uh, I'm the killer gamer. <laughs> I'm just watching that flight go by because of World Traffic 3, because World Traffic 3 is awesome. It's not perfect, but it's still awesome nonetheless. Anyway, we are here at Bolingbrook, Illinois, at Clow International. We got another plane coming in? Oh, yeah. So is that the runway we're going to be taking off from? <laughs> Hopefully in that direction. We'll see what... Uh... Well, I'm not sure. I mean, we should be on multi-comp, so I should be able to choose what runway I'm going to be taking off from. Uh, anyway, yep, we're here. My co-pilot's waiting for me there. <laughs> and um, we had a good time. We had a good time here in Bolingbroke. We went uh, to the promenade and uh, had a bite to eat over at Charlie's, so... Just kind of sat back, relaxed, talked with the people, and uh, chatted with the other pilots where they were coming from, where they're going, and uh, well, it's it's time to continue with our flight. So let's go ahead and uh, let me. I'll just pull out the map right here, so that way you can uh, see where it is that we're planning on going to. All right, so here we are, Clow International. You're thinking, what kind of flight map is this? This is from the Commodore 64. <laughs> it's the most as, as accurate as you can get, right? We're going to be going over here to Lansing Municipal. So, uh, we got our flight computer, but I will set uh, the nav radios just to be sure. I think if we set the Joliet radio here at... What's that? Zero nine zero 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 eight five. That'll be a good intersection to get us over in that direction. And we'll set Chicago Heights. We'll do just across the three six zero thing. That should link us up to about here. We'll see what ATC wants to wants us to do. But uh, that's the plan. And. Um, well, now we got to go ahead and get into the uh, airplane and uh, get our pre-flight list uh, pulled out and do our walkabout. All right, so here we are. We are in the aircraft. Uh, let's go ahead and let's just check out the maintenance report here and see how we're doing. Ooh, our spark sparking plugs, <laughs> sparking plug status is showing some carbon deposits. We better clean that off there. Good job. Don't you wish it was always that easy? Hey, ooh, we got another plane over here. Uh, let's see. Everything else looks pretty good. Got 
got some wearing. I think we're okay though. We spent some money to get those spark plugs fixed, so um, I think we're okay. Uh, I wish with the reality expansion pack there was a, a little something like um, not to make it difficult, like, well, you don't have any money to do this, but um, maybe you have to go do a flight to go pick up some money, and then you have money to re do some repairs on your... I don't know. It might be a little too complicated, but... <laughs> uh, let's see here. We will pull out our... That was not what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do. Okay, so we've got our pre-flight uh, checklist here. And before we do that, we're going to go ahead and do our walk around. All right, so the handbook is in the plane here somewhere. Hold on. Meow. Meow. I think this is it. Yeah, I believe I have them both. We've got, yeah, this is the uh, the operating uh, handbook <laughs> and flight manual. And I also have the flight physics and aircraft control manual. So we're good. They're in the plane. All right, let's see. Parking brake is set. Although you can't like adjust this to look, but it's set. Avionics power switch is off. And the master switch is now on. Why does this thing... I turned that off and I don't know why it turns it back on like that. Um, all right, that's on. Check quantity for fuel, we're good. Flaps full down. <laughs> Okay, master switch off. Do our lights checks. Toggle our lights on. And let's see. Looks good. Looks good. Those look good. That looks good. Back to our pre-flight switch here. Okay, fuel on off valve. Yeah, that's our fuel shut off. Um, well, we don't want it that on, so I guess the fuel on off valve, I guess, is on. <laughs> fuel selector valve on. That's down here. Uh, down in this direction. Uh, static uh, pressure alternate source valve is off. I need to look up what this actually does. I guess that's why we have that manual, right? Trim controls neutral. Yes, they are neutral. Baggage door. Yes, it's sealed. And let's go ahead and uh, we'll check this. Make sure that it's... Look at the shadow. You see the shadow over here? Something's moving. Huh, that's kind of weird. Okay. Rudder appears to be moving. Take our tie down off. Yep, that looks good. That looks good. That's moving. Take that tie down off. Let's see, fuel color looks good. That looks good. Take the chocks off. All right, oil looking good. Take the cover off. And current tire status, that side looks good. And that fuel looks good. And take the pit tube cover off. Whoops. <laughs> take that tie down off. And we'll check this air line here. Check these flaps. 
and take those shocks off and we're done okay so we did our walk we did our walk around we did our walk about all right so what did i do with the uh the knee board all right so here we are <coughs> I'm going to move this off to the side here. All right, so our seat belts and shoulder harness, is it fastened? Okay, yep, it is. Brakes uh, are set. Fuel selector is uh, both. Oh, look at that. Our parking brake was not engaged. Ah, I made the knee board disappear again. Um, fuel shutoff valve is on or that's that's a selector switch um let's see that's uh it's one of yeah this is it shut off that's in okay <coughs> circuit breakers make that thing disappear there circuit breakers look good beacon on avionic switch off master switch on throttle open just a little bit and we need the uh, it's like mixtures idle cutoff but we'll never get it started like that so I don't know why it says that and propeller area is it clear yep looks clear get out of the way here we go had this thing started. Alright, hold on. Set mix fixture full lean. Back throttle crank the engine. Alright. Set mixture full lean. Okay, that way. Try it now. Okay. Looks like we are good to go here ignition switch start we did that make sure we want rich we want the engine at 1000 rpm that's about right there oil pressure in the green, looks good. Temperature, well, it's a little cold. Avionics. Oh. Clearance, Sun Country, 8611, parked at uh, Signature, looking for clearance to Detroit with X ray. Sun Country, 8611, Instruments. Clearance to Detroit via Pageant 2 Ponchers, Smith Transition. It's time to get those set uh, here. 1 0 10,000. Set color will clean out of 0 10 minutes later. Clock 2241. All right, go to Detroit by the Panda 2, Smith Transition, and have filed. Climb maintain 10,000, expect 390, 10 minutes after departure, squat 2241, Smith Country 8611. Smith Country 8611, we're Okay, we'll set in, uh, let's see, come on. We'll lean this out a little bit. Four radio one. Let's see, one one four point two. Air shuttle sixty one fifty nine. Good morning. We're trying to get clearance to Houston. Air shuttle sixty one fifty nine. Clearance to Houston Continental Airport. Get a pound two departure. Flight transition. Dennis Hall. I maintain one zero ten thousand. Flight flight level three four zero. Ten minutes twelve five seven two four. All right, we're going to Houston via the power plant site transition. Then it's about climbing up to 10,000, expecting 340, 10 minutes after departure. Squawking 5724, 
How about a uh, runway expectation? Air shuttle 6159. Um, I'm not sure what you said the first time. I, I thought you said pound one, one, two, one, two, one, two, That's set. Oh, pound two departure. Air shuttle 6159. That is correct. Uh, read back to spread departure and stairs. And, and uh, what was that last one? Trying to figure out a runway. Uh, I think runway for now, runway 27 right for you. Thank you, 27 right. For and you. And which ramp for you? We are single uh, 1516. Roger, thank you. Have a good day. Destination here, K. Set on our flight yeah, computer uh, now. We got our zero nav zero radios, we got that. Three one zero a minute. Squawk one five one four one. Roger, the fill two, fill ten thousand, uh thirty thousand and uh ten and fifty one forty one American eighteen forty two. He's looking to see what American time it was. Okay, uh, so one zero ten thousand three fifty four. We should get request field November 172, Sierra Hopper, wind 0, zero 5 at 0, altimeter is 3002. Zero, zero, November 172, so, uh, Sierra Hopper, uh, Roger, thank you. Alright, I think we're set.
Got another aircraft coming in. Copy. Mystic 83, we're going to Mike Mike, Charlie, Zulu Airport. We have a bang to departure. Lunch now, unfortunately, this does not have any ground right. routes in it. Echo. So the Never planes, mind. they're just coming in yeah. for a landing and then they disappear. The Lima Echo, Golf, Golf, So they're Nando. not taxiing anywhere. Yeah, 43. The Papa, Lima, Yankee, Echo, Romeo. The right Kilo, November, Oscar, Sierra Tango. Mike 215. The Papa, India, Sierra, Alpha Delta. Uniform Mike 215. The November Uniform Delta, India, Sierra. In case you're wondering what that is to the left, that is actually the Rio runway from the um, <laughs> from the photo scenery. Magnetos, check. 125 over 50. Um, sure. Uh, throttle, idle, check. Radios set. Brakes released. Door windows closed. Clarence, up to 1307 LaGuardia Romeo. Purple 
Yeah, we tried the CPDLC a few times, and uh, PDC, you're not getting any of them. <laughs> this is why you have a checklist. <laughs> and I have a thing about heights, too, so that door being open and flying would not have been a good combination. All right. Uh, flaps. Okay, 1958. Oh, this needs to go up. And Delta 1307, clear to LaGuardia, you have sure. 1010, Delta 3907, uh, and 1777 on the squad. Southwest 3307, that's the Jack 2, departure, rest of the way back. All right. Okay, sorry, Jack 2, Southwest uh, 1307. Our, our throttle, full power, climb speed, we're going to be uh, lifting off at 79 knots. hit the okay, plane, but it doesn't okay. know where to go because there's no ground routes here, so. Oh, there's two of them. <laughs> we got another one there, too. Okay, we departed the area. Uh, uh, one Charlie, uh, Kilo, uh, India, call back traffic. That's November one F two here on Lapa, part of the area, south. Okay, uh, any reroutes for us? No. Okay, Charlie, Kilo, India, call back traffic. Okay, very good. Uh, well, we'll be calling for a push here in about. We can do a check-in now, too. I think. One, Charlie, five, Kilo, India, Hall, back traffic test, November 1, F2, here at Hoppa, 6 miles, northwest at 1,000. Say goodbye to Bowling Brook. about you, but I had some fun here. And that that one Went to the iPic uh, movie theater, sat there and lounged back and had them bring food to the seat. Yeah, what's up, man? <laughs> That's the last. Alpha Yankee and the day right. before arrival. Climbing from 1,000 to 
usually happens when I go off on multi-power because I don't get an option to change to another frequency. Uh, that's okay. It'll be a nice, peaceful flight. Turn off that change sheet there. Get a highway down there. What highway that is? Other than the fact that this thing uh, is a little jittery, which will be soon solved eventually, I love how you've got all the 3D objects and stuff. It's really cool. No, it's not exact. Well, we're missing some stuff there. And we got some trees plopped on top of some. Then there's some stuff here, which I think that's supposed to be something. But despite that, this at least gives us a, a good look as to how things kind of look in this area. I'm not sure what that is. Obviously, I mean like what kind of freeway it is. It's a, another airport, I think. We should look at a map. I think there's supposed to be trees on top of it. We got a river. It's an interstate. Gotta pull that up. And See what it is. I think I think that's the three fifty five that we just went over. The fifty five should be I think, no, that's the river. I think the 355 is around here somewhere. We might be flying right over here. I'm trying to compare the map on where we're at. See, take a look here. So, oh, here's Lewis. I think we saw that one. Over the 55, one or two. 
I can lean up against the window. like a million clicks on things just to get it back to that point. So we're 16 miles away, I guess. Eventually, once we get out of the Chicago area, I think our frame rate's going to get better. There's just so much autogen here that... Yeah, my little i5 backup is, is struggling a bit. Mile 10,000 
I think instead of a tango transition, what you expect to do is try tango transition. Can we switch? Oh my goodness. Let's try checking in again. Kilo India call back traffic at November 1 F2 Sierra Hapa F miles west at 3500. Kilo India call back traffic at November 1 F2 Sierra Hapa. Seven miles west at 3,500 quest field advisory. Dustin, uh, November 1, Dustin, two, the error. Wind 220 two, at 5, optimum 3003. November 1, F2, here at Hopper, right? Thank you. Well, there is no control tower where we're going, so... Much on Unicom the whole way. Although in real life it's 122.7. We got 122.9. I'm getting that from this information here from airnow.com. So, like right there, it's supposed to be 122.7. Not high enough to get Chicago Center, I guess. So. That's what they say runway was or the runs at two two zero, so there's a runway two seven. Village of Lansing. Runway 9 is relocated. Maybe we'll focus on these. 18 and 36. No. I don't think it matters which one we're on. Somewhere out there, beyond the fog, is downtown Chicago. Lots and lots of subdivisions around here.
maybe I just needed to switch it. to go before we get there. So what are we talking about? Well, we could talk about how I'm doing these flights on the older simulators. I actually work on those first um, before... Man, can you hear me at all? Turn down the volume there. Maybe you can hear me a little better. Um, so I'm doing these flights on the older simulators first specifically the Commodore 64, which is what, what this is. And then I will recreate the, that flight on each of the other simulators, um, with X-Plane 11 being the last one. Uh, because this one's got the overlays and the photorealism, which I know you can have photorealism on FSX, but you can't have like the overlays and the photorealism at the same time um, on a lot of the photorealistic stuff it's nothing but flat but there is something that I did manage to find oh which I forgot what it was called now I don't want to say it was called Vertica it was, it was something that added um, overlays and stuff uh, in certain states so you could use it with photo photo uh, real software so that's something that I will look into doing um, if I get prepared um, I've already got the Orbix uh, set up on FSX so I'm not messing with that any further but if I get prepared then I'll look into maybe getting the mega sceneries and then getting those uh, separate tree line and and stuff like that to go to go with it. Ten miles. So yeah, so doing it all on the uh, old simulator. So be sure you check that out. And we will be going into scenery disc coverage with the older simulators, uh, Commodore 64 specifically, with these, these scenery discs. So we're going to be able to explore quite a bit on the Commodore 64. And let's see, with um, the Amiga is pretty much the same, it just doesn't have uh, the West Continental United States coverage, so eventually we'll get to a point where we can't follow along with that simulator anymore, but we'll do as much as we can with it. And then there's uh, Flight Simulator 5.1, where the, uh, the DOS version we can do a worldwide flight on, but there's not as much coverage as you would expect to see. So I'm beginning to realize that some of the airports, once we get out of the Chicago area, that are in the Commodore 64 are not on 5.1. There's like one airport for Iowa listed, like Sioux City, and that's it. <laughs> Where's all the other ones? So with that, I'll have to manually add them in using a third-party uh, software 
to do that. So this is going to take work. Um, and so that's 5.1. Oh, we cleared up. Nice. All right. And then I just recently got this. All right, that's Flight Simulator for Windows 95. This is 6. This is basically Flight Simulator 6.0. And Flight Simulator 98 is 6.1. Um, I just, I've never flown this before. This is kind of like a cross between the DOS version and the Windows 98 version. So, so this has limited coverage also. It has like a few more airports than the DOS version. Um, but the 98 version has, it has all the airports that you'd be missing from the, from the DOS version. And if you haven't been watching those old simulators, so you know on this I'm using ProFlight Emulator. Uh, which is basically a program that allows you to emulate ProFlight 2000. This, okay, it allows you to emulate this program so that way you can use it on Flight Simulator 2004 and FSX and prepared and also on X-Plane with a plugin. But its roots go back to this. Pro Flight 98 for Flight Simulator 98. And so with this, I've got uh, ATC for Flight Simulator 98. And I've gone as far as recording my voice into the program. So you'll hear my voice giving uh, commands and stuff. Um, and I go by the call sign 13 Foxtrot. So I'll be changing. Um, the call sign on on this simulator so that way it's all in sync and eventually I'll get my voice into ProFlight emulator um, so that way we'll hear my voice instead of some other guy <laughs> and let's see some other stuff I got this uh, for Flight Simulator 98, which will add it as uh, navigational, as like a GPS and an EFIS uh, to it. And you can do uh, map planning, you can do your flight plans with it, and it figures out SIDs and stars, and it's pretty awesome. then I have a couple of other programs. Um, this one I'm using with um, Microsoft 5 or Flight Simulator 5.1 for DOS and mainly that one but I'll, I'll, I'm also going to use it on 98 and also Windows 95. It's this real ATC and what this is what this is like this is like the uh, the chatter ATC is on here, the XATC chatter. This works very similar, but it's based on adventure. So when you tune in to a certain, depending upon what you do, like if you lower your flaps for takeoff, then you get connected to tower. Once you lift off and you start going through 2000 AGL and bring the flaps back up, it switches to radio to where you're now on departure frequency. And so it automatically switches it depending on where you are during your flight. It's pretty clever on what they did. But the neat thing about this is I've gone in and I've replaced the ATC files with actual um, the liveatc.net from the specific areas that I'm flying from and to to try to give it a little bit more realism. So, so you actually hear, oh yeah, Clow International, blah, 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 or Lansing Municipal, blah, blah, blah. So you may not get the graphics, but you'll get to hear um, 
the actual air traffic so I think that's kind of cool and then I've got this this is for flight simulator 98 and 2000 I got it mainly for 98 now you think that oh okay just load it in and you got your traffic no apparently you have to you have to record the, the traffic so you need to actually fly the flight plans and patterns and then record them uh, for the airport and then the software will place the uh, dynamic scenery with it so you're basically you're recording the traffic and then the program plays it back or something something like that so yeah I've got that then of course I've got the ProFlight 2000 for um, Flight Simulator 2000 um, and then I'm using the default ATC with 2002 and then ProFlight Emulator for 2004 we've got Vox ATC for Flight Simulator 10 um, and right now we're using a ProFlight Emulator but eventually I'll use Pilot to ATC um, especially when it gets connected up with um, World Traffic 3. So just to give you a little bit of insight of uh, what we're doing, um, at least with the other videos, and we've got a lot of flights ahead of us. Uh, we're we're going to be going, to, I got a lot of these flights written down. We're going to be going to a lot of places. And we're going to go all over the world. This this is my thing. I'd never be able to do this in real life. But I can do it here. And I want to share that with you guys. You know, we're three miles away from the airport. We probably should get ready to land. <laughs> So the airport, whoa. Didn't want to do that. Okay, so the airport should be somewhere. That's not it, is it? No. Okay, there is an airport there, but it's out over here somewhere. We get our cheat sheet up here. Uh, let's see here. Our checklist before landing seat belts adjust okay they're adjusted fuel selector well yeah they should be on both because we haven't messed with anything and the gauges yep checked <coughs> yeah. ah, check heading indicator align it's close radio set autopilot off well we'll do that mixture rich flaps down approach speed 65 to 75 knots we're going too fast. All right. There is something here. Is that the airport? I 
think that's the airport. All right, let's get ready to come in for landing here. What are we, turning base? Hilo, India, all back traffic, uh, November 1, F2, Sierra, Hoppa, turning base for landing runway 36. Kilo India all the back traffic test November 1, F2, Sierra Hoppa, turning final landing run 3, 6. Looks like there's other traffic waiting for us. Pretend the other traffic's not there. Get out of the way. <laughs> Get off the runway here. We'll just go to the end here. Is there any way I can change that sound for that 
air conditioner. It sure is loud. Oh, here we go. This is what I was looking for. I was looking for a taxi waiting. Get off the runway! There are people trying to land here. And take off and all that good stuff. My goodness, this thing is struggling. It's so easy to overcompensate on this thing. Hello, India. All back traffic. That's November 172. Yara Hapa. Clear the active room. I like the reality expansion pack, but sometimes it's a little annoying. What do we park at? That's what I want to know. Okay, it looks like that will take us over to something. It's hard to see. Now, world traffic told me that it generated ground routes here at the airport. Um, I think I just saw that plane disappear. Plus, those other ones were just stuck out in the runway, so... Like I said, world traffic 3 is cool, but it's not perfect. I think it has a lot of work that needs to be done with it. So that's where with Flight Simulator 9 and 10, the traffic is just awesome with those. Really well done. But X-Plane will get there. I think X-Plane is more popular now than it ever has been. People are beginning to realize that this is truly the next G2. 
generation of flight simulators because it's not prepared. That's just that's just a nicer version of FSX is all it is. There's a parking spot right there. Oh no, that's a that's a compass. Huh. Oh that's cool. I wonder if that's here for real life. I wonder if that's really there. We'll find out when as soon as we park. seem to have run out of chatter files, I've noticed. about ready to say, ah, screw it, we'll just park right here. And the reaction time to this thing is just horrible. both ways before crossing the street. <laughs> As we uh, look over this way. Oh uh, well he's in the he's in the runway, so aircraft hangar over there. We'll go park over there.
Hey, I see a uh, gas pumps over there, I think. Is that 76? <laughs> the spirit of 76. And everything is jittery here. did something to it. The car over there, it's like... Off. Standby. Okay, well, I guess that's off. And what else do we have here? Flaps. Yeah, but this is off to the side. Trims. Okay, trims need to be neutral. Seriously? Alright, trim, neutral, let's see. set throttle needs to be idle it is mags need to be ground sure um, throttle a thousand it's kind of underneath that all right radio I need to turn that off mixture you set that to cut off Master alternator switch off. Ignition switch off. Ignition key glare shield. That's still going. Why is that still going? <laughs> What is this? this? This is the glare shield, right? Ignition key? Oh, well, I don't think that does anything. And then we got our securing the air aircraft. We got all this stuff, which is, is going to be on our, our walk, which will Man, how do we turn that off? It's like it's running and there's no way to turn it off. All right. Do our walk around. Post flight. Put the pit of tuber, tuber on. And our tie down. 
upside down shocks cover tie down and our last set of shocks this is annoying I can't even turn this thing off huh. maybe maybe this Static air thing? Maybe not. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, well, we're here at Lansing uh, Municipal, and um, well, that seemed to take a little bit for us to get here. But uh, we talked about some things along the way. Uh, but now that we're here, let's take a look at the real Lansing Municipal Airport. Here we are. This is the real Lansing Municipal Airport. And also, the historic Ford hangar is here, too. Um, so I will kind of show you where that's at. That's You can see it probably already. It's right up here. But, so we came in. <clears throat> Thanks, Google. We came in and we landed uh, on this runway coming north. And we turned off on one of these taxiways. It, I think it was this one because we didn't come all the way to the end but we landed because we were going around that uh, other airplane so we came onto the taxiway here come on zoom in there we go so we came in came around and checked this out there really is a compass on the on the ground there <laughs> It, it didn't look like it did on uh, on explain, but you know there is something there. It looks like it's just stenciled on there in this graphic, but I think that really is there on the um, on the concrete out there. It just looks like it's stenciled here for the um, for the Google Maps, but the fact that it was actually in the game tells me that. It really is there. Either the game picked it up or someone someone uh, knows Lansing very well and, and put that in there. But uh, so yeah, so we came in through and we had some taxing problems over here. Um, and then we pulled up, crossed the runway. And came right by, saw the Enterprise rent a car, and we parked right in here. And that gas station, huh, is like right here. Interesting. You can go in 3D mode here. Can, can we not zoom in any further than that? No, we can't apparently. But you can sort of see it says 66 right there. So um, I think someone put some put some personal love into the into the Lansing uh, airport there in X-Plane. It was kind of nice to see actually. I thought we could get right down to the ground with this. There's a way to do it. Ah, 
how was it? There it is, there it is, there it is. Yeah, so you can kind of see it does say 66 right there. So here's the historic Ford hangar right tucked away over here back in the corner. Um, so we'll, we'll check out some information about that. There is a uh, atomic bomb or something going off there. No, that's a... <laughs> that's a water tower. It's... Google Maps gets kind of weird when you get into this mode here. When you get into the 3D mode and, and kind of zoom in like this. It's cool, though. I, it, It's cool that you can... That you can do this. I wish you could zoom in a little bit further, but... So, what is this again? Oh, Lenny Q's. Yeah, this is a... Uh, I, I looked up on this. There's a, a barbecue joint that's here. Um, we've been eating quite a bit, so I don't think we'll, we'll stop here. Um, we'll take a look at their menu, though, um, before we head into town, because I do have some ideas of some things that I want to do. Um, we got the road back here. I don't think we saw this um displayed with you know it's probably got stuff on top of it um you know it's it's there in the ortho photos but you know an x-plane but overlaid it with stuff i'm trying to right click and i know that's not going to work so <laughs> ah. ah okay i have to hit the control key so yeah come around here chicago Something air center. Yeah. This is the real airport. Little hangar and stuff over there. Alright. Well, now that we're... Now that we've taken a look at Linwood and, uh, ooh, that was, don't know what that white thing was that went through there, but now that we've seen what uh, the airport and what Lansing looks like right here, uh, let's go ahead and check out that historic Ford hangar. All right, so right here, um, as a part of the Lansing Municipal Airport um, website, which uh, links will be in the description, here is the Ford hangar uh, foundation. And this is dedicated to the restoration and preservation of the historic Ford hangar at the Lansing Municipal Airport in Lansing, Illinois. So what exactly is special about this um, hangar? Well, let's take a look here. Um, you take a look at this uh, old photo. Photo. It's like that's all there was, was just this. Oh, it looks like it's got Ford on the top, too. That's kind of cool. So the historic Ford hangar located in at the Lansing Municipal Airport in Lansing, Illinois, is an airplane hangar built in 1927 by Henry Ford to connect his Ford Motor Company manufacturing plants in S Southland, Chicago, with his factories in Detroit, and to produce and display the Ford tri-motor airplanes. What are those, you're wondering? There you go. There's a Ford tri-motor there. Oh, I thought that was going to let me uh, <laughs> zoom in. I guess not. Okay, so Ford purchased 14 acres of farmland in Lansing, Illinois in 1923 to build his airport. Uh, beginning June 1st, 1926, work began on clearing the land. Uh, let's see, early days of aviation. Most hangars were often poorly designed. Temporal structures that were not well lit. To solve this, Kahn incorporated three distinct features into the building. Albert Kahn. First, not Noonien Singh. <laughs> Noonien Singh. 
First Con looked to improve the overall environment of the hangar by utilizing as much natural light in the building as possible. As a result, he incorporated five large 15 by 18 foot window openings that when combined with the open sliding doors allowed for natural light to reach about 40% of the total floor area of the hangar. Uh, second, he used an architectural technique known as cantilevered uh, construction that allowed the interior of the building to be open without need for columns to support the structure as well as reduce wind loads on the building. He also designed the hangar doors on the north and south elevations to easily be operated by just one person. Uh, during the 1920s, Henry Ford's airport in Lansing uh, hosted aviation notables such as Charles Lindbergh and Wiley Post, who used the airport to promote aviation in the United States. The postcard below depicts hangar tenants aircraft in the mid-1940s. <clears throat> that is difficult to see. Let's see if I can zoom in here. You can see it a little bit here. It's off to the side now. So, kind of cool. There's a little plaque here, historic Ford hangar. So um, Ford stopped making airplanes by July of 1932 and rented the airport land and the hangar to his former airport manager, Elmer L. Brown, and later the Hammond Aviator Guy, that, that one guy, Guy W. Amick. The Ford hangar and the airport were acquired by the village of Lansing in 1976 in order to qualify for federal funding for the Lansing Municipal Airport. It was established as a historic building on the National Register of Historic Places in 1985. That's a good year. The building continued to serve as a working hangar for a number of different aviation concerns until 2011, when it was vacated for preservation purposes. Efforts to assemble funds for the restoration of the building to its original condition for the benefit of the public are currently underway. And that is <clears throat> the Ford Hangar Foundation. Uh, let's see, what other stuff do we have here about the airport that might be interesting? Let's see, Village of Lansing has owned and operated the Municipal Airport, IGQ, since it acquired the former Chicago Hammond Airport in 1976. Anyone know why half the time you just see three letters and other times you see four? I, like, I've noticed that, like, when I go to look up airports, most of them want to be looked up with K-I-G-Q. But then, like, in, uh, like, the old simulators that I'm doing these flights in, some of them only come up with the three letters I-G-Q. And then sometimes you look it up that way, and nope, nope, you gotta look at it with a K, so... Consistency. Anyway, um, history of Lansing Airport dates back to the 1920s, uh, about uh, Ford... Uh, is there anything in here? Lansing Village, blah, 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 so this area is considered um, Chicago's Southland. Form a thriving area of business and industry at the southern base of Lake, Lake Michigan. And the area offers some of the best accommodations, restaurants, and entertainment options, et cetera, et cetera. One thing that I didn't um, realize is that we are on the border of Illinois and... Indiana, I think. I think it's like, like, l literally, it's like right, right here. Well, let me go back to the map. Okay, so here is the map. Um, Lansing Municipal Airport is here, but take a look at this. It's like literally, it's like right on the edge of it. So Illinois, Indiana, right here. That's the border. So the airport is like, so it's like a tile. <laughs> it's like just edged right up here, right up against it. It's 
there you go. If you're kind of looking for a uh, kind of nice uh, satellite view of everything going on so far, where we're where we've been at and where we're going and all that good stuff. Yeah, where are we going to be going next? Ooh, I can tell you, we're going to be going back toward Chicago, just because. Yeah, why are we zooming in here? So we can look at this depressing remains of what used to be Meeks Field. Really? I mean, well, it's a nice little park now. Really, guy? I mean, look at that. They just, they really don't want to build an airport there anymore. Well, let's just tear it all up and dig up and, and stuff. It, it looks horrible. That mayor should be charged with crimes against humanity. That's like worst things anyone could possibly do. So here's a little hint. We're going to be going to uh, Chicago Midway next time. Man, look at all these houses. They are all just crammed up right up against the airport like this. Look at this. Would you want your house near the airport? I wouldn't. Especially a busy airport like Midway. I know it's not O'Hare, but... Man. Zoom out, and it just blows you away that all oh, these little tiny little people are in here. All right. So let's go ahead and... Ooh, this looks interesting. What is this? South Deering, Lake Calumet, Gulf Island. Well, this is... That's neat. I completely lost where we're at. <laughs> Where's Lansing at? I, I, I forgot. Riverdale, Downton, River Dixmore, uh, Jumpin', Jumpin' Jam, play, Playland. We found that. I remember this this freeway and that apparently is about all that I remember <laughs> I know it's in here somewhere but this looks cool all right so let's go ahead and uh, let's go into let's go into town let's 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 find out what there what there is uh, here in Lansing all right so here is the official site for the village of Lansing um, I've never heard of a shredding event. <laughs> it's interesting, though. Um, that's good that they're in, encouraging people to bring their personal confidential documents to be professionally shred. Um, I just, I bought a shredder, like, long, long ago from Office Depot. Um, and it was like 50 bucks. It's a cross-cutter shredding type of thing. And, uh... Man, I've had that thing ever since. But, um... This is... This is cool. So, uh... Near Halloween, uh, don't bring any wet or moldy paper. I'm, I'm sure that they, they don't appreciate when you do that. Which tells me that someone did at some point. Uh, what is uh, about Lansing? Oh, let's let's find out. Welcome to Lansing. Oh, thank you. We just landed. Lansing, Illinois is the best of both worlds. Small town charm, deep seated family values, top notch education systems, and a select regional location await those who investigate the resources of this community. Look slightly beyond Lansing and discover rich economic educational material, uh, medical <laughs> and cultural potential to enhance the quality resources enjoyed by all who live in and work in Lansing. What about those that play? Is it just those that live and work? Residents, residents of the Southern Cook County community invite you to choose Lansing as the hub of your activity. We are out to win you over and help to make Lansing your new home. The Good Neighbor Day Parade. Uh, residents. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of stuff here for uh, Code Red sign up. Flood information, uh, village departments, 
LNN Channel 4. What is LNN Channel 4? The Lansing Neighborhood Network Channel 4 is to provide the technical resources and support needed for the residents of Lansing to inform each other and be informed about people and events in their neighborhood. It is our belief that the more the people of the neighborhood know their neighbors and what is happening in the community, in the, the, in the their community, the better will be the quality of that neighborhood. LNN provides professionally produced community-based audio, audiovisual programs, um, okay, public access channel, production resources and training for residents with the desire and ability to create community-based audiovisual programming, and up-to-date calendar, calendar of neighbor, neighborhood events and issues, and a 24-hour cable access, public access channel available to any cable subscriber in the village. LNN Channel 4 is dedicated to providing the community access to television airways in the village of Lansing, etc., etc. Um, watching LNN. Since these early days, many village residents have chosen other carriers for their television viewing. No problem! You can still receive LNN TV Channel 4. Here is how you can view the up to date programs announcement. Uh, yeah. Comcast cable subscribers, just flip to channel four. Okay. Um, is Direct TV your service and their provider? You only watch broadcast TV over the air? You can still access LNN TV programs directly over the internet. Just take these steps. Access the internet via your computer, smartphone or home network, which I hope that you are if you are looking at this website, um, like on your own computer and not, not through this video. <laughs> Click here to be taken to the Village LNN's channel on YouTube. Um, if you're interested in video streaming or access to actual program archives, go to let's let's go let's take let's take a look at LNN and see what what they have. Is this all LNN? Romance at Beggars, time of my life. She said, "Run changes." Naughty, no roots. This week in Lansing. Okay, I'll bite. Let's let's uh let's find out here. How long is this video? Oh, it's two minutes. Probably don't want to watch all two minutes of it. Let's see. Congressional hiring fair. They don't have a whole lot of things on there. Well, we're not least seeing all the videos either, but yeah, Lansing's Neighborhood Network, lnnchannel4.com. <clears throat> Let's take a look at this, this Romance of Beggars. It's a big keyboard, I mean. Oh, I know what this reminds me of. This reminds me of a place in... Uh, In Arizona, called Oregon Stop Pizza. A Wurlitzer Oregon. These things are just totally cool. And they're hooked up to all these instruments. So they got one of these in Lansing. That's cool. Beggar's Pizza, located at 3524 Ridge, Ridge Road, Lansing, Illinois. Well, I think I know where we're going to go. I think we're going to go to the uh, to the pizza place.
Very cool. Um, this week in Lansing, oh, we got a scary, uh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> um, well, this is, this is, this is neat. I don't think a lot of, uh, towns or villages, like, you know, I, I know some have their own little public access channel, but I think that's neat that they actually have something online on, on YouTube. So that's, that's really cool. Um, yeah, so if you're interested in Lansing, yeah, check out some of these videos and, and check out the, uh, the website and stuff. I'll put all that, all this uh, information in the, the links below. But for the meantime, uh, let's drive into town. Alright, so here we are at uh, one of our destinations, which is Beggar's Pizza. Um, I wasn't thinking about stopping over here, but everything that I wanted to check out is right here on Ridge. Uh, Ridge, Ridge Road. I was going to say Street, but yeah, Ridge Road. Um, and so Beggar's Pizza, it's obviously a, a pizza place. It's like, I don't maybe they originally had a theater here, I don't know. Established in 1976, and the founders, <laughs> like the Godfathers, <clears throat> um, proud pizza partner since 2014. Oh, with the Red Sox, and Chicago, proud partner of the Chicago Bears. So, let's go. Let's go check them out, and uh, we'll just go to their actual website here all right so beggars pizza um they only have the live pipe organ music tuesday and friday nights so and right now it's not friday or tuesday so unfortunately we're not going to be able to hear the music um, i will put in some links in the description so that way you can uh find some videos of people who have gone to Beggar's Pizza, but uh, I've I've been to a place like Beggar's Pizza. There's a place in Arizona called uh, Oregon Stop Pizza. It's much bigger than this, but it's it's very very similar. And, uh, come on, Wurlitzer organs and pizza always go together. <laughs> At least they always have for me. Um, where are their locations at? I wonder. Oh, they're all over the place, apparently. Well, Oregon Stop Pizza, is, is on, there's only one location for that. Oh, look at this. There's one near Kankakee. I was actually thinking of, uh, thinking of making a stop at Kankakee, as a matter of fact. So maybe we'll, we'll, we'll hit the... Uh, maybe we'll hit the pizza place there. That might be a good, good place to do it. So lots of... Um, Lots of them, apparently. Maybe some of these locations have have uh, the organ playing more than just Tuesday and Thursday. Okay, so what do we got here? The Big Cheese Club. I want to join. I want to register my ID number. I want to check my balance. For every $1 you spend, you earn one point. 200 points equals $10 in the beggar's bucks. That's, a, that's 200 pizzas. <laughs> That's a lot of pizzas. How do I join? Well, go to the website. Do I need to register? Yes, you do. How do I register? Download the app. I'm having difficulties registering. Can someone help me? No. How do I earn points or rewards? Buy stuff. Does your system automatically add, to, add my loyalty account to order? Yes, we even have your blood type. How do the rewards work? For every dollar you spend, you earn a point. For every 200 points, you're in $10. $10. Okay, so not, not 200 pizzas. How can I track my points? Well, download the app and check online, dummy. What are Beggar's Bucks? 
Beggars bucks of rewards, dollars, blah blah blah. Can I use my account for online ordering? This is a lot of questions. This is a lot of questions. <laughs> it's a lot more questions than I would have expected. Will I get a card? No. Can I refer my friend? No. Can <laughs> Anyway, it's a thing. Um, you guys can check this out. Um, menu. Let's take a look at the menu. Menu items and pricing vary at each location. Please click to find the specific locations menu for accurate pricings. Well, I don't see Kankaki. Bolingbrook. There's one in Bolingbrook. I didn't know that. We missed that when we were there. Maybe it's not in Kankaki. Maybe it's further up north. Why well, stop clicking on the right mouse button? Well, where are we at? Lansing, right? Here it is. If you're unable to download this menu, please call Lansing for menu items. Um, I'm going to assume that we're not going to be able to see that menu. Maybe. I don't know. Oh, okay, here we go. So, we got some burgers, hamburgers, turkey burgers, some sandwiches, some beef, the godfather, Italian beef with sweet peppers and mozzarella cheese. I like the sound of that. Homemade lasagna. That's that's different. Beggar's pizza, we lay it on thick. Blue Island, Oak Forest, Marionette Park. Huh. I'm not understanding what this has to do with the pizza. Wraps. Desserts. And then pizzas. <clears throat> Alright, thin crust, gluten free, deep dish, stuffed, by the slice, veggies, all kinds of nachos. Here we go. Oh, man. 575, 875 for nachos? That's not bad. Especially if they. Well, that's not nachos there. Choose any three of the above. 999 and get like a whole thing of that. That's, that's like unhealthy, but cool. All right. Well, we've taken a look at um, at this. Let's take a look at uh, the other stop that we want to uh, check out. I'll just go back to the street here because it's just around the corner. Just kind of walk over this way. And this should be it right here. All right. So unlock a lock escape room. And just in case you can't get out, there is all state, so you're you're in good hands. Um, yeah, so I figured I would kind of uh, join up with a, a few people I don't know and see if we can uh, get out of escape a room. Um, I've done this before, not at unlock a lock, but um, I did this one time with uh, some work colleagues in Nashville and it was fun it was uh, it was a fun interactive uh, type of thing so here is the unlock a lock escape room uh, site so this is a puzzling place where time matters it's time to get out and have some fun you got one hour so one room one goal clock is ticking um, you and your friends are locked in a room. Puzzles and clues are everywhere. It's up to you and your team to think outside the box and discover t the key to escape. And you only have 60 minutes. How many can play? Two to six. Play two to eight players. Just a hint: the more people in your group means more fun and greater chance to escape. Um, so we got contact location book now. Frequently asked questions. We'll take a look at that. What is an escape room? An escape room is a physical adventure game in which players are locked in a room and have to use elements of the room to solve a series of puzzles and escape within a set time limit. 
How much does it cost? $25 per person. Am I really locked in a room? No. If something goes wrong, you can leave through the door you came in. However, that is not the fun way out. If you do choose to exit your game, there is no re-entry. Is this scary? No, our rooms are designed to be fun and challenging, but not frightening. Although that would be an interesting game. How do I book a room? Well, you book your game, appear online, etc., etc. When do I arrive? Do you accept walk-ins? We do not accept walk-ins. However, last-minute bookings may be accommodated. Recommended ages, 12 years or older. Where there be other people in the room, unless your group booked all the available time slots for your game, there may be another participant since booking is left open until the room is full. What should I bring with me? Your thinking cap and a comfortable pair of shoes. Hmm. There's a lot. So this has got a lot of questions too. But we need a good thinking cap. Okay, well here's some thinking caps. Do you think any of these will work? <laughs> we got some here. We got this one. Um, in case you do want to escape, maybe this propeller on the hat uh, will, will get you away. We have an emoji that's kind of thinking. So, I don't know. Uh, maybe be prepared and get one of these caps here before you go into the lock thing, which um, I don't have. But I am going to do that. So, uh, I will be back after we go play this game. And... Uh, then we'll go to our last stop for, for today. All right, that was fun. Um, we managed to get out just in the nick of time. Uh, what's kind of nice is that if if it looks like you're, they're, you're struggling, your group is struggling, they will give you a little bit of a hint. So, But I don't want to tell what goes on because, well, that would give away secrets. So, All right. Well, let's uh, let's head back out here to the street, and we just need to go down this way just a tad bit. All right, here we are, our last spot. Um, I had saw this, seen this uh, chocolate uh, place called Gaty's, and I definitely wanted to come and see what they had. Okay, so as far as uh, Gaty's website, um, it appears to be down, um, but I did use the Wayback Machine Internet Archive to actually be able to pull up the website when it was when it was running. Um, this is back from 2006. That's a ways ago. Let me see if I can maybe, um, ah, here we go. All right. So this is a little bit more like it. Uh, this is, uh, more recent of a website, uh, dating back to July of this year. So I'm not sure exactly what happened. Um, between then and now for the website to not be working, but here it is. So, gaieties, um, ice cream for breakfast. Eating ice cream for breakfast may improve mental performance and alertness, studies say. <laughs> Sports lovers, the Chicago's best. Uh, from what I understand, this is like one of the, one of the places to go um, for ice cream in Chicago. Chicago's best homemade ice cream. Our homemade ice cream is churned in small batches with the highest quality ingredients. I love this chocolate football here. That is cool. Okay. So many people ask us how we got our name. Well, gaiety literally means happiness. In its old name, dating back to the good old days when it was sn snuggled next to the Gaiety Movie Theater in South Chicago, circa 1920. Um, it was very common in the 1920s to find a movie theater paired with an ice cream parlor. What a great night out! Take your date or your family out for movie, then dessert at Gaiety's. In those days, most homes did not have air conditioning, so the Gaiety was a cool place to hang out in the hot city. 
So, let's take a look at their chocolate guide. Fun stuff about our chocolate. There's milk, dark, white, sugar-free, how to store chocolate, varieties of chocolate. Sweet treats, apples, ice cream toppings, popcorn, truffles, you got sugar-free, sports, events, hand-dipped chocolate, signature assortment. Let's go for the deluxe. Oh, anywhere from seven bucks to 135. Oh, wow. I don't think we're going to get our full list here. We'll see. Yeah, the Way Wayback Machine is great, but it, it's not going to capture every single little thing on a website. But at least this gives us an idea of um, of what the website was before it uh, apparently disappeared or got taken down or who knows what. Uh, anyway, um, we're going to go ahead and stop there. And um, well, thanks for joining me on this on this flight. I uh, hope you had fun. Hope you uh, learned a little something here about Lansing. Um, I want to say Michigan. Is there a Lansing, Michigan? I don't know. But Lansing, Illinois. Uh, I know I certainly did. Uh, be sure to check out uh, videos of people that really have been to Lansing. I will put those in the description um, for you to, to check out. In the meantime, I do have other videos uh, of other flight simulators that I use to go to Lansing. So check those out. And other than that, I hope to see you for the next leg of our world tour. Take care and be safe out there. If you enjoyed this flight, then you might enjoy watching it on one of these older simulators too. We're following the same flight plan just so we can relive the fun memories of old. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified of future flight simulation videos and thanks very much for watching.